the pedigree shows the inheritance of a rare kidney disease. How is this trait likely inherited? If persons 1 and 2 marry, what is the probability that their child will have the disease? So let's try and answer the first question. How is this trait likely inherited? And we have to look at the hallmarks of uh, different types of traits. In this case, we see that there are several individuals like this one and this one who are affected even though the parents are not affected. And that means this is clearly uh, or not clearly, but most likely a recessive trait. Furthermore, we see that equal numbers of men and women are affected or males and females are affected. And that makes it likely that this is an autosomal recessive and not an X-linked recessive. The second part of the problem asks, what is the probability that the child of one and two will have uh, the disease? Now, since it's a recessive disease, it means that we are computing the probability that if one and I'm going to draw one out here separately and two mate and have a child what is the probability that the child has the disease. We also see that the, the father of individual two, so there's the mother and here's the father is affected. Whereas for individual one, the mother and father are not affected. However, the grandmother is affected. So as before, the, the first step in these problems is to um, write down as many genotypes as possible. And in order to do that, we should pick some symbols for the dominant and recessive alleles of the trait. And so I'm going to say that A1 over A1 is normal. A2 over A2 is disease and A1 over A2, the head, must be normal since we inferred in, in response to the first question that this is a, a, a recessive trait and so the heterozygote must be normal, must not have the disease. And so we can immediately write down that this individual, the grandmother of individual number one, must be A2 over A2, whereas the father of individual number two is also A2 over A2. What about individual 2? 
Well, individual 2 at the very least is a1 over dash since they are phenotypically normal and the same can be said for individual number 1. B by the same token, all these other individuals who are unaffected can be labeled as a1 over dash at the very least. We can say a little bit more about individual number two. Since they are um, their a parent, their father had the disease and was homozygous for A2 over A2, they must have at least one A2 allele and therefore they must be a heterozygote. Similarly, the father of individual number one must also have at least one A2 allele since their mother had the disease or was affected and therefore they must also be a head. Can we narrow down the genotype of individual 1 like we were able to narrow down the genotype of individual 2? As it turns out, we can't. Individual 1's mom has an A1 allele and individual 1's father is a heterozygote Therefore, individual 1 can be both A1 over A1 or A1 over A2, which is represented by the A1 over dash notation. Now, having worked out all the different genotypes as best as we could, let's go about computing the probability that uh, the, this child of individual 1 and 2 will have the disease. Now, the probability of having the disease is the same as the probability of this individual being homozygous for the A2 allele. Um, now, three things must be true or there must be three events that have to happen for this individual to be homozygous for the A2 allele. The first thing is that his mother must be a heterozygote. Okay, so we can say that number two is a head. The second event that must happen is that this individual's father must also be a heterozygote. If the father was homozygous for the A1 allele, there would not be a second A2 allele for this individual to end up as A2 over A2. Therefore, in order for this individual to be homozygous for the A2 allele, the father must also be a heterozygote. And the third thing that must happen is that when these two individuals mate, they, they, the progeny must be homozygous for the A2 allele. So we're looking at a monohybrid cross and we are saying that this individual has to be uh, homozygous for the A2 allele from the monohybrid cross now all these three events are independent of each other and we are interested in all three events occurring together so we have the AND clause we can apply the product rule to compute the probability 
of this individual being recessive um, or having a home being homozygous for the A2 allele. Next, we can start computing these probabilities. What is the probability that this child's mother, individual number two, is heterozygote? Well, she is already a heterozygote. When we worked out the genotypes, we, we inferred that she was a heterozygote, and therefore the first probability is one. What about the third probability? The, the, the probability that this individual is uh, homozygous for the A2 allele, given that the parents are both heterozygotes, and we know that that probability is a quarter. Finally, we have to compute the probability that individual number one is A1 over A2 and not A1 over A1. We know that individual one's father is already a heterozygote. In order to compute the probability that this individual is A1 over A A2, so individual number one is A1 over A2, we must know what is the exact genotype of their mother, but based on the information that we've been provided, we in fact do not know what the genotype of the mother is. However, we can make a reasonable assumption based on the fact that this is a rare kidney disease and the fact that uh, the individual one's mother is uh, marrying in from outside the family that it's highly unlikely given that it's a rare di a disease that she would be um, a carrier and therefore using this assumption of um, a rare disease, we say that his mother is um, a homozygous for the A1 allele. And in this case, the probability that this individual will um, be A1 over A2 is half because um, there is uh, half his, his father's sperm carry the A1 allele and half of the sperm carry the A2 allele. Okay. And then we can just multiply these fractions to obtain the probability of this child having this rare kidney disease, assuming that this child's grandmother or on, on his father's side, the paternal grandmother is um, uh, um, a homozygous for the A1 allele because we were told that this disease is in fact rare. We conclude that the probability that this child is uh, has this uh, kidney disease is one eighth. Now, as an exercise, let's also work out the situation in which individual one's mother is um, is a heterozygote, even though that's highly unlikely. If individual one's mother is a heterozygote, what would be the probability of this child having the kidney disease? And as before, we need to work out the probability that individual one will be a head. So let's do a Punnett square where we write down the gametes of individual one's father and individual one's mother. The father produces half A1 gametes and half A2 gametes since they are heterozygous. Similarly, the mom also produces half A1 gametes and half A2 gametes. And 
this is a, a, a monohybrid cross and therefore we have a quarter a1 over a2 over here and here and a quarter a1 over a1 and a quarter a2 over a2 now we want the probability that this individual is heterozygous and we may be tempted as we have done in monohybrid crosses before to state that the probability that this individual is a1 over a2 is a quarter plus quarter or half that would be incorrect and the reason is we already know that this individual has the dominant phenotype they do not have the disease therefore this possibility where individual one is a1 uh, a2 over a2 is not possible now our genotypic proportions are a quarter a1 over a1 is to a half a1 over a2 or 1 a1 over a1 is to 2 a1 um, over a2 and this means that the probability of a1 over a2 is two-thirds since the heterozygous genotype is twice as likely as the homozygous a1 genotype so if the mother of individual one is a heterozygous individual instead of being homozygous for the a1 allele the probability that individual one is a het is two-thirds instead of being half and if you multiply the, the the fractions through this means that the probability that this uh, their child individual one and individual two's child will be um, uh, homozygous for the recessive trait and that is it, it'll have um, uh, the disease is one sixth